All right, it is nice to be back. Hi everyone, my name is Amir. For those of you that are new, I started this channel up back in 2018 where I was first just recording videos for myself to study and I was kind of doing study sessions with the small groups on Skype and other places and then I got a lot of feedback about how my teaching was really good and I've always had a thing for teaching. It's kind of what brought me into medicine. Um, so then I started posting the videos and lo and behold, eventually I started getting quite a following and people were really gaining a lot out of my videos. Um, today I am a senior research coordinator at NYU Langone here in Manhattan. I work in the vascular surgery department with a bunch of patients who have DVTs and other vascular issues of that type, uh, as well as history of stroke, uh, peripheral arterial disease, and so on. And uh, I work with all the surgeons there, 11 surgeons as of right now, where uh, I just help them run clinical trials. So uh, this has really, you know, been something that I've been doing in the, I would say, probably the past four or five years now. And it's just been an amazing experience where, you know, you, you read these practice questions about clinical trials and how they're handled and then the publications, the biases, the data, uh, phases of trials and so on. I got to actually see that, you know, so it's been, it's been pretty epic. Um, I've also been able to make a lot of connections, uh, got to do a lot of networking, and then, of course, a lot of patient health care while I was knocking out my U assembly and taking care of other things that come in life. Um, today... I'm live to really just catch up with everyone, kind of come back into the into the flow of things. It's been a while since I've posted a new video. Uh, I've been working on a lot of things, though. Uh, I've continued to get emails throughout last year. Uh, throughout the whole last 12 months, I've received a lot of uh, students who wanted more tutoring, students who bought more of my products, some of which are on the screen right now. Students who were benefiting from the videos I have in my premium setup here on YouTube. and. I realized that you know a lot of the education in the world really is just education that's finance based right the, the whole purpose of most things that large industries do is to just make money and that's again a great goal to have everyone needs money but then it shouldn't deter from the quality of the material uh, one company I kind of always talk about is basically Kaplan right Kaplan's education system is all about the money you pay a buttload of money infinite money essentially but you don't really get the quality of, of education that you're supposed to get for the money you pay I mean their program can cost you up to five thousand dollars for just you yourself and you end up just being one person in a classroom of maybe 50 plus people where you kinda of gain incomplete information because the, the rest of the information is in their books and if you just buy the Kaplan books and those are also incomplete because the rest of the information is in the lectures and even if you combine the lectures and the books then you end up having practice questions of things you probably never anticipated and seeing that was where kind of I, I developed the annotated books I have you know kind of having everything in one place so that as you're reading topics for example if you're reading about acute coronary syndrome and trying to learn about a STEMI and uh, and STEMI, you should also be able to do practice questions simultaneously. Really understand the tricks of of what questions are going to look like, and really be able to anticipate the question as you're reading it to know what the the question writer is trying to get at. You know, and then and then the answer becomes more clear before you even look at the answer choices. Because as soon as you look at the answer choices, if you're confused already then the answer choices are just going to lead you to different forks where you're just going to get the question wrong and you know I'm sure a lot of you have seen in your practice questions that you knew what was happening you had a pretty good idea of what the right answer should be yet you didn't pick the correct answer because you just weren't guided well enough my content whether it's the uh, CK annotated book or the step one annotated book is full of extra notes it's full of a bunch of practice questions at the end of every chapter and the videos I do also encompass key details that I talk about and it's all in the book. So what happens is by the time you're ready for your test, by the time your test day comes, you've kind of had the exposure to everything you need, right? And I try to lay out the details and the conversations that I have with you in such a way that it feels like I'm doing the, the session with you one-on-one, -on -one, you know, your direct study partner in a sense. Uh, the premium videos I have are also exactly that. And it leads to most students telling me something that at first I thought, you know, felt kind of funny to hear. But students have told me that during test day, they recall specific things I said, you know, and it's, it just, it's just my voice in their head reiterating something that was relevant to the question they're doing. And it has guided them in figuring out the right answer. 
So what's going to happen in my new type of lectures, which I'm going to be starting from basically tomorrow on, 6 p.m. essentially every day. So, you know, like this video started at 6 p.m. New York time. Uh, it's 6.11 in New York now. So every day I'm going to be live at 6 p.m. I'm going to try my best to do it every day, where we're going to continue going through more and more lectures throughout the day and then just really tackling everything from both books. Okay, so we're going to be looking at, obviously the first topic is going to be cardiovascular, which trust me is probably one of the hardest topics because in itself it's hard to begin with but the fact that this is obviously related to every other organ because that's how every organ gets their blood lungs kidneys GIT whatever you want to talk about makes cardiovascular questions an intricate part of the step because step is now compared to like 10 years ago five years ago even shifting towards mixed questions where the question might start off with something related to gastrointestinal and then it ends off asking you something cardiovascular or it might start off with cardiovascular and then ends up asking you about something renal related and in step one you even see questions where uh, it might start off with something related to cardiovascular but then shifts gears and the question is actually going to be about something biochemistry related or ethics related and you got to be ready for that right so these lectures, the new session of lectures that I'm going to put in the 2023-2024 folder, are all going to be lectures where we discuss full-blown topics from CK and First Aid Step 1, really delving into pretty much everything you need to know so that anyone that's watching these lectures can really just sit there and go through all the lectures and really not need anything else to master topics such that when they finally sit down to do practice questions, whether it's on an NBME, UWorld, Amboss, or a Kaplan Q Bank, whatever it might be that they prefer, that they're able to actually tackle the questions very well, which of course means that you should hopefully be getting the questions right, but even if you don't, you're not entirely lost, and that's the goal. So tomorrow, 6 p.m., I'll be live, and the live sessions are going to be open to everyone. They're going to be public. So, you know, there's two benefits to joining live. One, of course, it's free, it's there, you just join and you watch. Two, you can ask questions, right? I'm here, I can see the chat. If anyone says anything, I can respond to it. So that's always good, right? That's always going to be something that's helpful to people because I remember even in the past when I did lectures, people had questions, people wanted to ask more about something that was on the, on the screen maybe. And it helps to, to get the guidance. And even if I don't know the answer right away or maybe the lecture is too intense for me to break the, the flow and give an answer, I'll at least be able to get back to you later on, right? And I'll type the answer back in the chat later on so that you can get your response. And, uh, of course, as always, there's my email address. If there's anything that I'm talking about that doesn't make sense or you have more thoughts on, you can reach out to me. You can also reach out to me to buy my annotator products at any point and then that takes care of that aspect. I'll be live to start with cardiovascular where we're going to start delving tomorrow into the ECG. Right? And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the ECG. So we'll start talking about how you actually see a normal ECG, how you're supposed to break this up, how you're supposed to read it, um, key things that are significant when you're evaluating an ECG, whether it's because you're going to be telling it to your attending or really just because you're going to be doing rotations in cardiovascular and you need to be able to understand that. And of course for the exam, right? key things that are going to be just book knowledge that you really need to be able to kill the test. Um, a lot of this information is actually very critical because you have to remember on step, whether it's two or, or step one or even step three, when you're given an image, when you're given a ultrasound or x-ray or any kind of other imaging, um, they don't tell you too much in the question. In, in the question stem itself, it can either be really short and then they give you an x-ray or uh, MRI or something, or it could be a very extensive, extensive question stem, but then it kind of just tries to lead you away from what the image itself is telling you or the imaging itself is telling you. And again, you don't want to fall for that. As a physician, you got to be able to really just key in on what's significant to you, what's pertinent information to you, and then just kill the test, right? So that's going to be something that you have to work on as you practice more and more questions. We'll go into the ECG tomorrow, we'll wrap up all of that, and then we'll kind of come back and look at step one stuff, which is mostly the embryology of, of, of the cardiovascular system. And these are two sections that, again, are what I consider heavy on information, but simple on understanding. There's no real intensity in the grasping of knowledge here. We'll even look at some extra images and extra questions and really try to get what it is you're supposed to memorize and know for the test, right? Not just throwing a bunch of knowledge at you. And as we go along, we'll keep, you know, going through cardiovascular, really wrapping up every single 
topic, whether it's congestive heart failure, the different kinds of arrhythmias, coronary artery disease, all the different types of shock and really understanding what it even is, right? If you've found yourself getting questions wrong about the different things that change the, the, in the four factors written here, right? CVP, PCWP, cardiac output, SVR, how they change, why they change. The point is not to memorize. It is really supposed to be commonsensical and we're going to get that common sense. We're going to understand it. We're really going to understand the pathophysiology and have a better understanding of how everything uh, kind of acts together. And then again, practice questions, right? So to to really lock in the knowledge, we, we need that because then we get to see how things present, right? Not just know what the topic is. Um, we'll continue as well in the step one book to wrap up the rest of pathology here and any pharmacology. Remember the step two CK book doesn't really have much pharma in it. The, it's just kind of broken up throughout the book but in the step one first aid we have pharma in intensely and pharma is probably the most significant thing about being a doctor. Right? You need to know your medications, the side effects, how they work, um, and we're going to talk about that in, in close proximity really wrapping up the concept of where you apply which medication, right? Because all cardiac medications are pretty much significant to almost every patient you're going to meet in America. And it's very, very important for you to be up to date on exactly what to give a patient in which scenario. Um, more importantly, side effects, because patients can come presenting with a the, with the symptom, but it might not be a symptom of disease, it might be a symptom of a side effect from some medication they're taking. So again, you know, I'm happy to be back, and for those of you who have never watched a video of mine, I hope my new content helps you, and if you're taking your steps soon, then sign up for the premium, run, run through those videos, get all of that in, and you'll be able to kill the step for sure. I have yet to have any student who's ever joined watch the videos and then really come back and tell me it didn't help. So that just, actually I've never had that happen, not really, I've never had that happen. So, um, you know, that's that's something that I'm definitely very lucky for now that I think about it. So, you know, whatever it is that you need, feel free to reach out to me at any point and I hope my videos help and uh, I look forward to helping all of you guys and good luck with your uh, with your exam.